Good morning. I think it was Carl Jung who said, life is encounter. It's good, isn't it? In the meeting of people, that's when we grow, that's when we develop relationship, that's where we build community, that's where we go to war in encounter, you know, the positive and the extremely negative. So what does the Bible say about this point? Well, a great deal. In fact, I've been working very, very slowly this year through the book of Proverbs. I say slowly because you can't rush at it because it's just lots and lots of little bits. You have to think about each piece as it comes to you. So here's a piece. I'll just share the screen. And we're talking about encounter. We're talking about the speak no evil challenge. <laughs> I'm not sure that's a, a thing or not. Okay, here's the verse in chapter 16. A scoundrel plots evil, and on their lips it is like a scorching fire. A perverse person stirs up conflict, and a gossip separates close friends. Wow. So in the encounter, there is a consequence. It's either negative or positive. And they're talking here about the two polar opposites. Really, they're focusing in this bit of the parallel picture on the negative side. So I'm going to stick with this one for the minute. So a scoundrel, a wicked person, plots. It's one of the stage characters in the book of Proverbs. You know, we have the fool. The fool says in his heart there is no God. And this is like the wicked one, the, the, the baddie. A scoundrel plots, devises, devises evil. And on their lips, in the encounter, that's when you speak, in the encounter, it's like a scorching fire. It, it levels everything, it destroys, it takes it to the ground. A perverse person, that means somebody who is not living a life straightforwardly, but somebody who is twisted, devious, deception, all those kind of words. A perverse person stirs up conflict. Did you have that expression? You know what I mean when you say somebody who st stirs it up? It was something, I was born in Yorkshire, and that's something I remember from my childhood, is somebody who stirs the pot. It means somebody who just likes to mix it up a little and create trouble. A perverse person stirs up conflict. A gossip separates close friends. It was Alex Roosevelt Longworth who said, if you haven't got anything nice to say about anybody, come sit next to me. There's a tremendous lure in the hearing of bad news, in the passing on, in the transmission of gossip. And... If that were not the case, then many a celebrity magazine would go bust overnight. But how about you? How about me? What do I do with my speech? Do I stir the pot? Do I gossip? What do I do with the words that come out of my mouth in the encounter that Jung said constituted life itself? Well, as I say, the Bible speaks at length about the way we speak about each other and the motivation behind such conversation. And Ephesians 4 is a very powerful passage. Paul's talking to a young church, young group of believers, and he says this, let no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth, but only such a word as is good for edification, building up according to the need of the moment, so that it will give grace to those who hear. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with all malice. So there's a whole selection of ideas, but there's all of them all of them relate to different forms of negative speech. I'm not going to worry too much about what each individual one means, because I think, you, you know, <laughs> we know, we know already. I would think that wrath sounds like something that flares up 
and bitterness sounds sounds like something that is like a, a grudge that's being held for a long time in my mind. Uh, but slander means telling lies. But he says the good side and he says the bad side. Share words that build up according to the need of the moment. Share words that, here it is. Oh, I love this passage. It says, words that give grace to those who hear. Do my words give grace to those who hear? The word grace means a gift. It means means offer opportunities for, for more, for more relationship. Do I give grace? Do I open people up or do I shut them down? Okay. And that word, let no unwholesome word. Well, that's an interesting word. It means fruitless, fruitless words, words that don't create fruit. And you remember where we started? A scoundrels, the words on a scoundrel's lips are like a scorching fire. No fruit bearing there, no growth, no development, just an ashy blackened mess. Speech is the vital currency of life. Speech is how we develop relationship. So what do my words actually do in the development of those relationships? Do they give grace to those who hear? That's an interesting thought. The opposite to giving grace, you might say, is to give law. That means if my words don't give grace, then do they condemn? Do they categorize in sharp, rigid, black and white lines? This is, then this isn't. There's so much outrage isn't there on social media and in the world is as if we're looking for something to be mad about do my words do my decisions do my responses give grace to those who hear do my words take on the role of a judge this is something that james warned about don't speak against one another brothers he who speaks against a brother or judges his brother speaks against the law and judges the law. But if you judge the law, you're not a doer of the law, but a judge of it. Generally speaking, for a moment, you have to think about the words you speak and answer the question. Generally speaking, in the main, am I positive or negative? Am I looking for the angle here? Am I looking for what's wrong or am I seeking out what's right? Generally speaking, in the main, what do you reckon? Think about it. What is my speech full of? What comes out when I speak? Well, there's a terrible answer in Psalm 10. It says his mouth is full of curses and deceit and oppression. Under his tongue is mischief and wickedness. Wow. <laughs> full of it. <laughs> full, full of it. Curses doesn't mean swear words particularly. It means words that attack other people, that criticize and condemn and put down other people that go out like, like little arrows and darts. Do you remember that description of Satan as the accuser? of the brethren and when paul was talking about how to defend yourself in life he talked about taking up the shield of faith with which to stop to prevent all the fiery arrows of the enemy well when we criticize and condemn when we speak negatively then we are taking the role of satan when we accuse our brothers our family members our human family members then we're taking the role of satan and there's a modern paraphrase of psalm 10 that says they carry a mouthful of hexes wow that is pretty strong surely we wouldn't do such a thing you and i have a friend who's a vicar and they used to tape their services uh, like many churches do and he and his wife drove away from their church with the sermon recording in their car 
like an old cassette I suppose, something like that maybe a cd and they put it into the car music system no they didn't that's i remember now they the the recorder was on the back seat and it went on recording so what they got was the sermon the close of the service and then them talking about everybody in the church <laughs> so it merrily recorded their total drive time conversation as they picked off various people in the congregation with a mouthful of hexes <laughs> not curses but sharing concerns for prayer you understand and evaluating the spiritual condition of their people of course that's what it was of course well, I never heard whether they sent the tape out unedited as usual, or maybe it got mysteriously lost in the tech process. But we just have to take that onto ourselves <laughs> and think about the quality of our words, whether we're positive or negative, whether our lips are talking up trouble, because underneath the curses, there is deceit and oppression. Deceit means to twist. It means to restructure what was spoken for the purposes of control. Oppression means control, control. And underneath that is a subtext of mischief and wickedness. Why would you, why would you do such a thing? It's kind of entertaining, isn't it? It's, it's like playing a mind game. It's it's amusing oneself with something that is unhealthy. So the book of Proverbs has a great deal to say about this. Negative conversation, uh, digging up evil, stirring up anger, kindling strife. And such conversation will always find a celebrity magazine to print it, so to speak. Always find an audience. An evildoer listens to wicked lips. A liar pays attention to a destructive tongue. And in Proverbs 18 is amazing. The words of a whisperer are like dainty morsels and they go down into the innermost parts of the body. And in Proverbs 26, for lack of wood, the fire goes out. And where there is no whisperer, contention quiets down like charcoal to hot embers and wood to fire. So is a, a contentious man to kindle strife. So how do we come against this? Paul was very specific and helpful. He warned Titus, malign no one, be peaceable, gentle, showing every consideration for all people. There used to be an old poster in the Second World War in England here that said, is your journey really necessary? Because resources were so stretched, it was deemed important to limit their use. So perhaps we should say the same thing about our conversation. Is it worth, is it worth saying? Does this line of conversation bring grace to those who hear or does it, does it not? Why am I really speaking thus? There's a moment in the Sermon on the Mount when Jesus talks about the way we use language in the making of oaths. This is Jesus. You have heard it that it was said to the people long ago, do not break your oath, but fulfill to the Lord the oaths you have made. But I tell you, don't swear an oath at all, either by heaven, for it's God's throne, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot even make one hair white or black. All you need to say is simply yes or no. Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. The evil one was another way of saying the Satan, the accuser. Isn't that amazing? that our whole personification of the forces of evil comes into the wrong use of words, the Satan, the accuser. Jesus is saying, cool it down and, and declutter, declutter your speech. Don't make pretentious claims for your speech. Just bring it right down to yes or no. Take it easy, take it slow, take it small. So Jesus refers to the common 
pious sounding legalistic practice with a mighty grace response. He said, don't swear an oath at all. Just say yes or no. Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. Anything, anything. Let's finish there. <laughs> I want to encourage and bless and not condemn with these words. Amen. But we have to recognize where we are. We have to recognize what we do with our mouths. And one simple way is to say, I'm going to be just cautious every single time I use the third person. If he or she, if those terms come into my, if those pronouns sneak into my conversation, I just have to be cautious about what comes next. Think about it. Lord, I pray. Keep me simple. Help me to bridle my tongue and speak things that give grace to those who hear, that build up and do not tear down. Help me not to engage in contentious issues and to malign no one, to be peaceable, gentle, and show every consideration for everyone I talk to. Through the grace of God in Jesus and in the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. 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 Zip your lip. <laughs> Lord, may I speak your grace in Jesus' name. God bless you today.